Hey everyone, this is Hugh from Playglands Media bringing you, well, kind of a special uh, video today. Um, so, four years ago last month, uh, my father actually passed away. And it wasn't uh, easy to deal with by any stretch of the imagination, as most of you uh, would assume. I was living in South Korea at the time and it happens kind of quickly uh, so I had to fly back to Australia for the funeral and all that kind of stuff and everything like that and uh, one of the ways that my father and I actually used to bond I guess going as far back as high school is through uh, books my father had a very uh, simple uh, taste in books. He liked Clive Cussler, he liked Tom Clancy novels, war books, westerns, um, detective stories, mysteries, things like that. So in high school I started reading these sorts of books um, just you know to have something to talk to him about that kind of thing. And then uh, as the years progressed I um, used to, especially since I moved to South Korea, I used to go out of my way to buy uh, books that I knew my father would like, read them, and then in my yearly visits back to uh, visit him in the Blue Mountains, I would take a whole bunch of books back for him so that he could have a chance to read them and experience them as well. Like the, the newer Tom Clancy stuff after Tom Clancy had died and other authors started to take up the intellectual property, things like that. So because it's been about a month uh, since the anniversary of my father's death, which is coming up actually tomorrow. If I look at the clock, yeah, tomorrow. Um, it will be four years and one month since my father died. I decided to talk about some graphic novels that just reminded me of my old man. This isn't going to be a sad video in any way, shape or form. He would absolutely have hated that, although granted he would have hated most of the stuff that I've uh, posted on the internet with his comments of why I'm being a silly bugger. But uh, so yeah, today I just want to talk about two graphic novels that I've read recently that just really reminded me of my old man. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So the first uh, graphic novel I want to talk about is God Country by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. This is Donny Cates' uh, debut graphic novel published by, I believe, IDW, if I'm not mistaken. Um, someone, Image, sorry, printed by Image, not IDW, printed by Image Comics. Now, uh, this is a fantastically written story about an old man with Alzheimer's disease, his son and his son's wife and daughter kind of have to get, they get called back to his farm because he's had an episode and the police have taken him back to his farm and the father doesn't remember them. He's degenerated very, very quickly. And then there's this kind of a mystical tornado that brings this, all of these demons and, and stuff to this farm. But it also brings a sword called Volifax uh, who is the self-proclaimed master of blades. This is like a giant anime, uh, a giant anime looking sword. Um, let's see if I can find a picture of it. Somewhere. Okay, so you can kind of see the giant uh, anime looking sword. So when the old man holds this sword, all of his memories come back, he's lucid again, he's just like he was, he's stronger, he has powers. The problem being, the creator of the sword, this kind of all-powerful being, wants the sword back. So he sends uh, his son to go and, and get the sword back. The old man doesn't want to give up the sword. Each time the, the old man lets go of the sword, his memories start to decline again. So he really has this vested interest in keeping the sword and this uh, kind of world-building titan has a vest, vested interest in getting the sword back. Now, it's a fantastic story, but what really resonated with me was uh, particularly the ending. And it only resonated with me 
as strongly as it did. I mean, the whole story is phenomenal because I clearly remember the final conversation I had with my father. Now, being in South Korea um, and my father's health was declining. He was having trouble um, getting up to the, to the supermarket to get, to get groceries and things. So every week I would call him uh, on the phone, usually a Saturday or a Sunday. And while I was talking to him, uh, I would be online and he would be telling me the groceries he wanted and I would be doing the online shopping for him. And then uh, we would pick a delivery date and that's kind of how my father got his groceries. Um, almost for, for almost a year, I was, I was doing that for him occasionally you know, sneaking in bottles of whiskey and stuff, uh, some bottles of red wine and things, salmon, things like that, things that I knew he'd love to cook. Um, but the last time I spoke to him, it was a very odd conversation. I remember telling my wife that it, the, the conversation didn't sit right with me um, because the last thing my father said to me was, we have nothing else to talk about. Those were his last words to me. And then he was gone. Uh, a few days later. So the ending to this uh, comic really kind of stuck out and, and resonated with me in that way in when the uh, the old man is, is talking to his son. <clears throat> fantastic, fantastic book. Highly recommend you picking it up. Image Comics, God Country. Next, we go back to a familiar favorite, another Image Comics um, collection. This is Pulp by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I spoke about them in a previous video. Pulp is basically the story of a writer in the 1930s called Max Winter. Max Winter writes uh, pulp comic stories for newspapers and comic books. And uh, his stories revolve around uh, Westerns, this character called the Red River Kid. Now, the reason Max writes this story so well is because in his younger days, he was the Red River Kid. Uh, he was a, a bandit who uh, robbed trains, robbed banks, that kind of a thing. But now it's the 1930s. It's no longer l like the, the turn of the century, the uh, late 1800s early 1900s. He's old, his uh, heart is, is kind of going, he gets robbed and he realizes that he's not going to have the ability to look after uh, his, his new wife. So he decides to plan a robbery, uh, but he is stopped by a former Pinkerton detective who had been chasing him back when he was the Red River Kid and who now wants to like recruit him to do another job and that is robbing Nazis. Now this whole book is set around uh, the time when there was actually a Nazi rally held in Madison Square Garden which I didn't think was real but it actually happened uh, before when, when Hitler was rising to power before um, Everything kind of went kids out with World War II. So you have the historical, um, the historical content there. But why this reminded me of my old man is because those of you that met my old man would listen to the stories he used to tell about when he was younger, when he immigrated from England to Australia. All of these just fantastic stories that initially you wouldn't believe them. Kind of like big fish, but without all that magic fantasy kind of stuff. But my father led such an amazing life. And that kind of is what I'm reminded of with this book. The, the main character in this book had this amazing kind of life. But then as he got older, he was really just thinking back on those days and, and reliving those days. Uh, both of these books did make me sad to read them, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy them. I fucking loved both of them. Anything by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, I can highly recommend. Uh, but honestly, look out for anything written by Danny Cates. His first book, 
just a powerhouse, absolutely phenomenal. Sorry that there weren't any jokes in this one. Sorry if I made you all feel a little maudlin, but uh, this one has been playing on my mind a little bit and I just wanted to kind of get that out there. So I guess uh, my dad would all want you to just go off and uh, I don't know, read a fucking book, people. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.